And um, I couldn't be happier to follow Christian because I'm here to tell you how to take that programming skill and use it to do something to change the world, specifically how to explore the world from your computer. So ever since I was a kid, there's two things in life that I've been really passionate about. Um, the first is traveling the world. I took my first transatlantic flight when I was two weeks old, um, in my mother's arms, obviously. And uh, since growing up in Ireland, I've lived all over the world, in France, in Austria, Australia, Japan. Mongolia, and now all over the US. So whether it's boats, planes, trains, cars, or even horses, I've pretty much traveled on them all. The second thing that I'm passionate about is technology and computers. So I started, like Christian, I, learned, I started learning to program when I was seven years old, and I now run a technology startup called Tomnod in San Diego. And I also spend way too much time playing video games, so whether it's Spaceships, soldiers, samurai, or Mario, I've pretty much played them all. And my ambition is to combine these two passions, to take these two things that I love in life, and to try to use the digital world to understand, explore, and impact in the real world. I guess you could say that I kind of want to be Indiana Jones, but for nerds. <laughs> okay, so in order to kind of illustrate how I want to, I want to do this, first of all, we're going to get started right here with a little game that I want you to all help me with, okay? So you might have noticed that I'm wearing these rather snazzy, shiny silver sneakers up here. Now, I happen to suspect that there's somebody else out here in the audience who's also wearing shiny silver sneakers, and I want to find this person. But these lights are in my eyes. I can't really see anything, actually. I presume that you're right there, because I can hear you. But, and there's you know, people upstairs. You're all sitting beside seats. It's dark. It's going to take me by myself hours to search through you all, right? So what I want to do is ask for your help. So right now, I want you to look down at the shoes of the person to your left and to your right, and if either of them are wearing shiny silver sneakers, I want you to stand up. OK, so if the person next to you is wearing shiny, boom, OK, right there already. We've got two people standing up with this lady in the middle. Can you please show us your shoes? Would you mind? All right, OK, cool. <laughs> shiny silver sneakers, right? So in like five seconds, we accomplished a job I, with all of your help that would have taken me an hour, right? I want to give thanks, by the way, to uh, my beautiful wife, Laya. She has a thing for shiny silver shoes. Um, it was just in case none of you were wearing silver sneakers. But so what does is, what is searching for silver sneakers have to do with exploring the world from your computer? Well, what you guys have just illustrated is something that's been around since humans first started forming tribes, right? This power of the wisdom of the crowd, the ability that many hands make light work. But now that we're all kind of part of a digital tribe that contains billions of people, how can we tap into this wisdom of the crowd on a much larger scale? Well, let me give you an example. Um, this is a mountain called Pal Carajo in the Cordill Cord Cordillera Blanca range in Peru. It's a big mountain that is uh, much sought after by mountaineers. And a few months ago, my company got a call to say that two climbers were missing trying to climb this mountain. Uh, no one had heard from them in over two weeks, and there were pe people were starting to get concerned. The mountain is 25 kilometers away from the nearest town. It's a more than a day's journey on a donkey, which is the most effective mode of transport. And so how could we, all on the way other side of the world, help to search for these guys. Well, did you know that right now there are in space lots of satellites orbiting the planet taking high resolution photographs of every inch of the Earth? So we can jump from right here in Texas and zoom in on Peru in just a matter of moments. And this isn't just top secret spy technology, right? Like this is, we've gone beyond the Cold War. This is actually commercially available. So we called up one of the companies that operates these satellites, Digital Globe. And we asked them if they could t photograph this mountain where the climbers were missing. Just a few hours later, we had gigabytes of data coming in of high resolution photographs. This is a very zoomed out version of the entire mountain range that they were able to photograph from space. But now we had a new problem, right? We'd gone from not being able to help at all to now having billions of pixels covering thousands of square kilometers to search through. So we were going to need some help. So this is where you helping me search for silver sneakers ties into searching for climbers on the other side of the world. Our company launched a, a crowdsourcing website where anyone online could come to the site and take a look at a small snapshot, a zoomed in section of that satellite imagery. And we asked them for their help in identifying clues in that imagery that might lead us to the location of the climbers. So for example, 
this might be evidence of an avalanche. Or could these two lines be footprints in the snow? Well, this is just one person's opinion, right? And as everybody knows, you don't trust any random person on the internet, right? <laughs> but that's where the power of crowds comes in. So within just 15 minutes of launching this site, this is a, an example of one area in imagery where you can see that loads of people all working independently on their own computers all around the world had dropped a little green circle here saying that they think maybe there's something that looks like a person in this picture. Okay, now, when you get this, th the idea of two people standing up either side of the silver sneakers gives me confidence that there's actually something going on here rather than just one guy trying to, to fool me, right? So likewise, when we have 20 people all marking this place, what do we see? These three subtle shadows, right? Very hard to detect by yourself, impossible to train a machine to do this, and trust me, I've tried. I'm a programmer, I'm lazy, and I want to automate these jobs. <laughs> but instead, we reach out to the collective consciousness, the perceptive power of the human brain, which is still unequaled for a couple more years anyway. <laughs> so these, these three shadows turned out to be the rescue team hiking up the glacier on their way to search for the missing climbers. So it was an important clue, but we weren't there yet. Over the next four hours, Thousands more clues like this rolled in from hundreds of online explorers. And we were able to turn this huge photograph into a knowledge map. Right? Each of these circles is one point of interest dropped by some random person, whether it was a friend, a fa family member, somebody we just connected with on Facebook who came to our site. And in the back end, we have computer programs and algorithms that are monitoring this and trying to find where is the consensus, where is the crowd all converging on. And what we're able to do is pull out the most important locations and send those GPS coordinates to the rescue team in Peru. So here's one of the top locations that we identified from the imagery based on crowd consensus. And it, you might not be able to see this very well, but there's this subtle, tiny trace, a line leading off, to the, to, off this ridge, kind of indicated by this red arrow here. We were able to send this to the rescue team in Peru and say, you should go check this place out. Ultimately, it turned out that this, these were the last steps taken by the climbers. And the next morning, guided by clues from the satellites, the rescue teams found their bodies a 1,000 feet below this ridge where they'd fallen. So unfortunately, this story has a sad ending. But I think that it illustrates the power of collecting people online in a team, searching through satellite images, or using their collective perception to, to solve whatever problem, to find vital clues about our Earth that could, in future, save lives. So, I want to give you a few other examples of how we're using this technology to try to change the world. Just last month, when Hurricane Sandy swept up the East Coast, we were able to collect images and quickly map the damage and to direct uh, the efforts of you know, the aid teams and reconstruction. Over the last recent months, when the uprising has been breaking out in Syria, we've been monitoring the civilian movements as well as the military response in an area where it's too dangerous to send people on the ground. And one of the most exciting adventures is that we used satellites to search through the wilds of Mongolia, which led us to a mysterious mountain where we uncovered an 800-year-old mystery and found the tomb of Genghis Khan. But that's the story for another day. Uh, <laughs> for now, let me leave you with some numbers that, try to, that, that, that demonstrate the potential of this collective consciousness and of the digital world that's growing and how it can change the real world. So this month, Americans, you, me, all of us here, will spend a collective 100,000 human years on Facebook, right? And now we're not just wasting time, right? That we're, 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 we're organizing information, we're tagging photographs, and we're connecting with real people. A little bit more time wasty. It's estimated that at its peak, the online game Farmville, there were more people playing Farmville than there are actual real farmers in the world. <laughs> right, so, so there's, there's potential here, there's power. And uh, the kids loved this one yesterday. So the new Call of Duty game just came out two weeks ago. It's, the most, one of the, it's continuing the most popular video game franchise of all time. It's already sold tens of millions of copies and logged billions of hours of playtime. In fact, there's a statistic that says that virtual soldiers in Call of Duty have already killed the world's population ten times over. Okay, and this is my favorite one. This guy here, does anyone recognize him? This is the new world record holder for the longest consecutive video games playing session in the world. He played for 135 hours straight, more than five days continuous uh, video game playing, right? That is dedication, <laughs> okay? So I want to harness this dedication. I want to harness this skill, this teamwork, and even this creativity, and use this collective consciousness of the digital world to have an impact in the real world. 
because I believe that technology is the new way to travel. I think that gamers are the new tourists. And I definitely believe that programmers are the new pioneers and engineers the new explorers. So my advice is go be a nerd and change the world. Thanks very much.